Hello, I'm Dr. Hazel Lowe. I'm a plasma physicist working on fusion plasma diagnostics at Tokamak Energy in the UK. It's Friday the 23rd of October 2020 and this is your Fusion News Update. Stories today include 1. Superconductor technology for smaller sooner fusion. 2. Investments in privately funded fusion ventures grow. 3. Fusion energy four times cheaper than nuclear. 4. Machine learning technique could improve fusion energy outputs. And we have a couple of bonus items. 1. Superconductor technology for smaller, sooner fusion. A team of researchers from MIT's spin-out company, Commonwealth Fusion Systems, and MIT's Plasma Science and Fusion Centre have published details of a new, industrially scalable, high-current, high-temperature superconductor cable called Viper. If you're a regular viewer of our Fusion News Channel, you will already know that innovations in the field of high-temperature superconductors have given rise to a new generation of compact high-field tokamaks. Magnet coils built from high-temperature superconducting materials must maintain performance over thousands of power cycles, while withstanding mechanical forces over 600 times atmospheric pressure. Also, a process known as quenching, where part of the cable is heated to a point where it stops superconducting, is a common problem. Viper combines hundreds of yttrium-barium copper oxide coated steel tapes soldered into a monolithic copper housing. Differences between individual tapes are averaged out as the current is shared by the tapes and the housing, leading to stable behaviour of the overall cable. A fibre optic monitoring system developed at CERN and the Robinson Research Institute in New Zealand provides feedback on temperatures inside the cable, allowing rapid action to be taken to prevent a quench. The team are working on developing magnet coils from the Viper cables for inclusion in the Spark Tokamak as well as other projects. 2. Investments in privately funded fusion ventures grow. Physics Today reports on the investment of hundreds of millions of dollars in private companies working to achieve power generation from fusion in the next 10 to 15 years. Commonwealth Fusion Systems in the US has raised $200 million, while Tokamak Energy in the UK has raised £150 million. Both companies aim to demonstrate fusion yield by 2025. Tokamak Energy is pursuing fusion using high-field, high-temperature spherical tokamaks, such as ST40. As I've already covered, Commonwealth Fusion Systems will begin construction of the Spark tokamak in 2021. TAE Technologies and Zap Energy are both based in the US and have raised $750 million and $14.5 million respectively, while the Canadian company General Fusion has raised $200 million. Zap Energy and General Fusion are pursuing pulsed power-driven plasma generation, which in the case of General Fusion scheme is followed by shock-driven inertial confinement to achieve fusion conditions. Meanwhile, TAE Technologies' method is to generate a plasma at opposite ends of a vessel and accelerate the two plasmas towards each other until they collide. There are challenges ahead for all of these companies, but they have one thing in common, the ambition to create the first fusion reactor that supplies clean energy to the grid. 3. Fusion energy four times cheaper than nuclear. New research published in a special edition of Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society on prospects for high gain inertial fusion energy suggests that fusion energy will be four times cheaper than nuclear and half the cost of onshore wind energy production. The paper, authored by Nick Hawker, CEO of First Light Fusion, examines the cost of different energy production techniques using a measure called the levelized cost of energy. This quantifies the average net cost of generating electricity over the lifetime of a power plant. The paper states that a future power plant using shock-driven inertial confinement fusion to generate energy could operate at a levelized cost of energy of $25 per megawatt hour, compared to $50 per megawatt hour for onshore wind and $100 per megawatt hour for nuclear energy. While research into shock-driven inertial confinement fusion energy is in its infancy, Hawker is optimistic that developments in this field will contribute to achieving a zero carbon global energy system by 2050. Four, machine learning technique could improve fusion energy outputs. Scientists at Sandia National Labs in the USA have been awarded $2.2 million over three years by the Department of Energy to investigate how machine learning algorithms, more usually associated with training self-driving cars or your smartphone assistant, can be applied to simulating fusion plasmas. The lead researcher on this project, Aidan Thompson, explains that we have pioneered machine learning's use to improve simulations of the reactor wall material as it interacts with the plasma. He goes on to state that it is not a trivial problem 
to physically observe what is going on within a reactor's walls, as these structures are internally bombarded with hydrogen, helium, deuterium and tritium as parts of the superheated plasma. However, by using data from simulations of atomic and molecular dynamics to train machine learning algorithms benchmarked against smaller datasets obtained experimentally, Thompson and his team aim to contribute to the design of the next generation of fusion reactors at the end of this three-year grant. That's all from the main news, but as usual we have a few extras for you. We've talked about the ITER project, that's the International Topomac Experimental Reactor on Fusion News before. ITER is a collaboration between 35 nations working to build the world's largest tokamak in southern France. A new article from powertechnology.com gives a brief introduction to nuclear fusion and the ITER project, so if you want to find out more, click the link below. There's also an article in Wired about hype, using fusion as an example of a technology that doesn't get enough hype or attention. The author, Gemma Milne, argues that we should look past hype and see the reality of what's going on in science and technology. But maybe we should also think about how we can raise the visibility of fusion among our friends, colleagues and communities. Finally, there's an article in the Financial Times about Amanda Levette, the prize-winning architect working on designs for General Fusion's prototype fusion plant facility. That's all for Fusion News this week. Please subscribe to our channel for more fusion news and check out the links in the description if you want further information.